U.S. Route 66 is America's main street, and it goes right through the heart of Tulsa, where we're at today. Well, there's more than one way to get around this town. We're going to show it to you, take you on the public transportation, the BRT, the microtransit, show you how people really get around this town. All with CEO Scott Marr and his whole crew, plus the food and culture of this amazing southwestern American city, Tulsa, Oklahoma. U.S. Route 66 is almost 100 years old, and nowhere is it celebrated like it is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, the centennial is coming up in 2026, so there's a lot of revitalization that's going to be happening across the state. Oklahoma in particular, we have the most miles. We have 400 drivable miles, um, so there's lots of spots that are being redone, opened back up, or just celebrated again. Um, restaurants, shops, diners. I mean, it's pretty fun to see all that happen. Um, so we definitely are invested in helping this area grow. The Route 66 was decommissioned in the 70s, and so um, the federal funding kind of stopped and a lot of these areas just died. So when you do the route, you'll see parts that have just been forgotten. So this area in particular in the last five years has grown tremendously. There's been a lot of investment and engagement, so it's really fun to see this area come back and people come through and travel from all over the world. It's just that kind of taste of Americana culture that people um, want to be able to experience. And you know, this is one of the first highways that you could travel across the country. So. When we have people that come in that, you know, remember this is their first time on the road trip as a kid that they went from, you know, Chicago to California. This is the road that they took. So this has a lot of history for people. So they get pretty nostalgic about it. So it's exciting. It's good. So Chase, we're here on Route 66 coming right down in Tulsa. Uh, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Route 66. Absolutely. Yeah. So Route 66 really has a, a storied place in American pop culture, right? And so um, Tulsa plays a central part of that. Um, Cyrus Avery, um, you know, the father of the Mother Road, um, he was a former Tulsa County Commissioner. Um, he really, you know, played a, pr a very crucial part in bringing Route 66 to Tulsa um, as the main access point across Arkansas River. It's not just about wide roads and open highways and, you know, and fast cars and classic cars. It's also about the people. It's about bringing connection um, to places. Um, so, and uh, introducing that to other people, bringing them, being able to give them access to your community. And so, um, a lot of really cool, beautiful things um, that you see in that. So Route 66 kind of goes right through the heart of Tulsa, mm -hmm. and um, you've got an amazing transit system here that includes a bus rapid transit line, yep. and uh, we rode on that. Tell us about what you've got planned for Route 66 and BRT, yeah. putting it all together. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So um, we're very excited about um, the role in that integration of bus rapid transit um, and Route 66. So, um, so a little bit of backstory. So our BRT, um, our vision for the BRT um, is really to introduce a lot of Tolsons to public transportation. But then as just a functional piece of transportation, um, we really see the BRT as this connection point for all of our other services. So we have microtransit, that's, that's kind of a new type of service that we've introduced to Tulsa. And then we also have our existing local bus service. Um, we really see the BRT as being um, uh, an anchor point, if you will, for a lot of those other services to feed into. Something that, you know, maybe they're not able to use the BRT, one of the, we only have one BRT route today. One of the hidden treasures in Tulsa is the Outsider's House, where the movie was filmed with Rob Lowe, Francis Ford Coppola, really set the tone for a generation. It's right here. It's recently been bought by a famous musician. They're turning it into a museum. It's going to be a Broadway play. The book was actually written here by a high school girl from Tulsa, The Outsider's House. Scott, when I was young, the only thing I really knew about Tulsa was they had these big praying hands. I'd like to go see them. Are they still here? It is. It's at Oral Roberts University. Well, great. Well, I got one question then. How do I get there? We're at Denver Avenue Station. Let's hop on our BOT and head south. Good. So Scott, we're on your BRT headed to the, uh, the Praying Hands at ORU. Tell us about this BRT. Yeah, so this was funded back in 2016 with the Vision Tax. We started this in November 2019, right before COVID. 
currently it is over a third of our current monthly ridership. Wow, so people love it. They do love it, and we continue to see the ridership continue to grow. Is it on, is this is the main corridor? It is, so this is the middle of the north and south corridor. It's every 20 minutes is our frequency currently. And what have you got coming up? What plans do you have for more BRT? We are in the process of starting the Route 66 BRT, so we're super excited about that. That's on 11th Street. That'll be a 20 minute frequency as well. Um, look forward to showing you that here in the future. Yeah, that's great. And give us a little bit about your whole system in Tulsa itself. Yeah, so we have 24 fixed routes. We have micro transit service that has six zones at night, four zones during the day. Super excited about our micro transit service because it's exceeded the expectations that we ever dreamed of. Um, we've doubled the ridership of the routes that we replaced it with. Wow. And of course we have our paratransit service. And now as of today, it was announced, we are now Metro Lake Tulsa with our new brand and our new logo. Yeah. No better time than to be a part of this team. So we're here, we made it to the praying hands on your BRT line, which is fantastic by the way. This is like I told you, I always saw this on TV off and on when I was a kid. And to be here, it's amazing now. I mean, that thing's massive. Yeah, so it was made in Mexico. It was shipped here in 1980, and it's 30 tons. Wow. Route 66 is known as the Mother Road. So we had lunch at the Mother Road Market Food Hall. Brian, this place is awesome, man. Tell me about it. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm Brian Pascal, CEO of the Lubbock Taylor Family Foundation. And uh, one of the many investments that we have in the city of Tulsa uh, is Mother Road Market, okay. which is, is where we are today. Um, recently voted the number one food hall in America by USA Today. Dude, Being congratulations. Thank you. Not, yeah. It's not me. It's the work of all of the businesses that pop up here every day. So what you have here is uh, 15 restaurant concepts, uh, individually owned businesses that uh, pop up. And in addition to being just a typical food hall, we also run an incubator company for okay. startup food businesses. Um, so there's 45 businesses a year uh, that take our programming, taught both in English and Spanish. So tell me about this. Yeah, so the Takeover Cafe model is I think what makes Mother Road Market truly special. Every day is a different business that pops up here. Um, so these are brand new businesses testing their concepts, connecting with the audience, uh, refining their menu, figuring out if this is really what they want to do. We also have a food truck uh, on the premises, and so if they're a food truck based business, they can test that out as well. All right, so tell me about the big award. Sure, Dr. Custom was uh, nominated as a, a semi-finalist for the James Beard Award, best chef in the Southwest of the United States. Congratulations on your James Beard semi-finalist status, chef. Tell me about your restaurant and the concept here. We do Brazilian food, the uh, most traditional street food in Brazil. We, uh, we have a menu we change uh, almost every day and we try to bring all the different flavors from the country. Yeah, so I think for, for us, the success of Mother Road Market um, really allowed us to invest even more broadly on the foundation side in this part of Tulsa. So we are feel honored to be on Route 66, which is where our name came from. Um, but we have been working with the city of Tulsa on a multimodal street scape project here. Okay. Uh, we installed a brand new bus terminal right out here. Um, Route 66 is the next expansion of our bus rapid transit line here in Tulsa. Um, so we feel very fortunate to be in this corner of Route 66, uh, promoting uh, the next generation of great food entrepreneurs. The Mother Road Market has something for almost any taste. So you can bring your whole family or all your friends and everyone will probably find something they love. I tried a bunch of them and they were all good. Excited to be here in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the SWATA conference, one of the largest annual conferences of public transportation leaders in America every year. Rich Sampson is the executive director and they've gathered over 500 leaders from the eight states they represent to hear about what's happening and for a great announcement from the mayor and from the general manager, Scott Marr of Tulsa Transit of a brand new brand for their transit system. Connectivity to the transit hubs. I think a transit only CDL. Training. A new name to spice things up a little bit. Well, of course, the BRT, the Bus Rapid Transit on Route 66. While at the conference, along with my friend Frank White III, CEO of the Transit System in Kansas City, I enjoyed the opportunity to share about the five traits of a future public transportation leader. From my chapter, in the upcoming book, The New Future of Public Transportation.
and in the expo at the Vaunted booth, I got to sign and give away copies of our best-selling cookbook, Comfort Food. Harold, congratulations on your new role as president of Latinos in Transit. Thanks, Paul. I could not be more excited to represent this organization for the next couple of years. Have some exciting things going on. Really, uh, really, really to share with everybody what we're going to be doing. Well, tell me. So we've got some quarterly training coming up. We've got the Workforce Development Task Force led by Rosa Medina Cristobal out of, out of Dallas. Excited about that. That'll kick off soon. We've got our Leadership Summit in Portland. We've also got uh, more in the scholarships that we're raising and also more people altogether. The organization is growing tremendously. Raymond, tell us what is Black Wall Street? Black Wall Street is a part of the Greenwood District here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is a traditional African-American neighborhood beginning in the 1890s. Um, it was a thriving area for African-Americans who migrated here. Uh, there were many businesses here that were black owned and primarily because of segregation they were able to thrive amongst themselves uh, because their money and opportunities were not available outside of this neighborhood. But it's an important area. Uh, it unfortunately experienced a tragedy in what was called a Tulsa Race Massacre but was able, they were able to rebuild afterwards and the community is strong, resilient and thriving. And you're the head of the museum here. Tell us about this. This is Greenwood Rising Black Wall Street History Center, which was created in 2021. Uh, and it chronicles the full history of Greenwood uh, through the, its origins, the Tulsa Race Massacre, and its rebuilding. Uh, it's an 11,000 square foot immersive experience, and we welcome close to 50,000 visitors annually. We've been here just a couple years, so that's been over 100,000 visitors, school children, and others from all around the world who want to learn about this rich history. Scott, we're at your main facility here at Rockford in your office. This is where Tulsa Transit is. We've been here since 1968. We've outgrown this facility. We have 119 vehicles, 65 fixed route, 54 paratransit, and microtransit vehicles, but we simply just don't have the inf infrastructure to support more electric vehicles, the next thing, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So we put in a grant for bus and bus facilities, and we're hoping to achieve that this year so we can start the process of possibly moving in the next three to five years. So, Scott, what are we going to look at here today at your facility? Yeah, so today we're going to show you the maintenance facility and we're going to show you the admin building. I've met a bunch of your team, Scott. You're very blessed with a great team here of leaders. Yeah, I've assembled a great team. I'm the second longest tenured director <laughs> in my team today. And so, only been here two years. And only been here two years. So my maintenance director, who you're going to meet very soon, Randy Cloud, he's been here 13, 14 years. And I've now been here two years to the day starting tomorrow, so everybody else is fairly new but we're excited. I got a good young team that pushes me every day and challenges me to the most. Tulsa Transit uses compressed natural gas, or CNG, to fuel much of its fleet. Maintenance Director Randy Cloud shows us how it works. So this is our uh, CNG compressor station. We have two uh, 250 horsepower CNG compressors here that, um, that we take the, the natural gas comes into the pipeline at about 20 PSI. We compress it up to 3,600 PSI goes into these storage tanks where it, uh, it cools down to ambient temperature and then we put it into the buses through the, uh, the time fill post around the perimeter of the, uh, the lot there. So this is a fast fill dispenser. It's, uh, it, it shoots gas in um, really, really quickly. It's for uh, pumping a lot of gas into a, to a large container very quickly. Hi Randy, so I'm a driver. Mm -hmm. I back in my bus. Mm -hmm. Here's your fueling gantries. What yeah. happens now? Uh, they, they, they simply take this hose off Clip it onto the receptacle on the bus, flip the, the uh, nozzle over to fill. Okay. And walk away. We're in the shop. Uh, how many mechanics do you have? How many vehicles? Okay. Uh, we have 26 mechanics operating out of this, our only shop. So they're all domiciled here. Uh, they, they take care of, of 114 vehicles. Uh, we have basically two fleets. We have our, our heavy uh, uh, fixed route fleet and then our, our paratransit and rideshare fleet, which uh, consists of cutaway buses and minivans. Randy, what a lot of people may not know about public transit agencies is their main garages are often located in places like this. Oh, absolutely. We're, we are just outside of downtown, just outside of what they call the interdispersal loop. Uh, one of the oldest parts of, of Tulsa, 
this, uh, all the infrastructure in this area, we, we've struggled uh, when we were putting in our CNG station, our, our electric infrastructure, because all the uh, utility infrastructure in this in this area is 70 years old. <laughs> yeah, it looks so, like an old you know distribution it, facility. It, or something. it is yeah. and absolutely every every uh, business in this in this neighborhood has has been here for 50 plus years. So you run the micro transit service here, which has a brand new name. Yes. Metro Link Tulsa. Awesome. Let's get on and tell me about it. Sure. Yeah. This is a great vehicle. What kind of vehicle is this? It's a front runner. Great. And uh, so this micro transit service, is it just like a normal on demand, use an app and those kind of things? Yes. Yeah, so it is, yes, on demand. Um, you can plan at least an hour in advance and book a trip and you're ready to go. So how does it work? Let's say I am a visitor to Tulsa. I've never been here before. I come to town. I want to get around. What should I do? The first thing you do is you download the GoPass app. Okay. That GoPass app. Like in the app, app store. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's also for uh, Apple phones as well. Okay. And so that point is going to take you everywhere you need to go in Tulsa. And so I download the app and I want to go from downtown out to somewhere, you know, to for dinner. I, is it just like Uber, Lyft or whatever? I plug in where I want to go and it, how does that work? Yes, so you once you download the app, you hit plan. So Because you're going to plan the trip, okay. you just hit plan. You put in where you are and where you want to go and it tells you what fixed routes go there okay. and what micro would go there. Next, I rejoined Chase Phillips for a tour of downtown Tulsa and some of its amazing features and the placemaking there including the tunnels under the city, which were built in the early 1930s to protect its rich oil millionaires from being kidnapped. This was the same time when Tulsa's airport was the busiest in the world. I also got to experience the inside of Tulsa's Art Deco skyscrapers, whose ornate lobbies are out of another era. All right, so the locals encouraged me to visit a Tulsa cultural landmark, Gypsy's Coffee House, with the city's original comedy open mic night. So, here goes nothing. You know, I'm pretty sure my wife is losing her hearing. And so the other day I thought I'd give it a try and figure out what's going on here. So we started walking, I dropped back about 10 paces, and I said, honey, can you hear me? Nothing. So I get a little bit closer, about five steps behind her, and I say, honey, can you hear me? Nothing. So a little bit, three steps behind. Do you hear me? Nothing. Finally, I get right beside her, and I say, honey, can you hear me? She says, Paul, for the fourth time, yes! <laughs> Tulsa's been amazing. And Route 66, coming right through the middle of it, is a heart line, an artery through the veins of the city where we could show you the food, the culture, the amazing public transit, and leadership in this city. Tulsa is America's heartland.